before you picked it up. That's a classic. <laughs> and they have asked me, 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 to join them for their weekly lunch, and I have wanted to be a part of this group. Yeah. Hello, Miss Beckens. It is I, or Vlad the Ghoul, next door, and the Huntress with Nina Shade. And today would be Sunday, March the 1st, 2020. And okay, so uh, when I edit this together, you're going to see what I'm calling the pre show, which was yesterday's footage, part of yesterday's footage. And then this is the review of. The Invisible Man. The Invisible Man 2020. So okay, we are at the cinema and it is Saturday, February the 29th, 2020. It's a leap year. And what are we going to see? Invisible Man. Yes. So, okay. There's me and my Kabuki theater makeup because, you know. It actually looks pretty good. It's, it's late. It picks up the camera. Yes, yeah, so you can tell that I'm very influenced by drag queens. Yeah. It is pretty quiet out here though. Yes, but we haven't seen the movie yet. Yeah. So we probably end up having to tape out here or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We, we, at least <laughs> we still have like an hour before the movie even starts. Yeah. We were very early. We had to go get our loot. First off, what were your thoughts? Well, when it first was going, I was like, oh, it's just an amazing movie. Um, and then I kind of got why they did it that way towards the middle. Um, I should say, total spoilers. There will be tons of spoilers in here. Okay, sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, so you kind of like get why everyone thought she was crazy. Like, because she was taken, like, she got herself out of that situation, and then he dies. Um, and then she, she's haunted by his ghost, but it's not his ghost. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the premise of the movie, um, and, and as we do this, it's, it just came into cinemas a couple days ago, so I know I usually try, when I do a cinema yeah. movie, I try to keep spoilers out, but there's no way to do this without spoilers <laughs> it's, it's it's in order to do any kind of really good yeah um so the so the premise of the story is that we open with this woman she's lying in bed next to her boyfriend and she is literally sneaking out of the house because he's abusive and she's Loves trying him. To, yeah, she, yeah. She, but he's abusive and she's trying to get away from him so she drugs him uh it doesn't really work no 
because uh, he just as she gets out of the mansion, by the way, <laughs> this guy is loaded. Filthy rich. Yeah, he is filthy rich. <laughs> like a ten million dollar view. That then they yeah yeah. Um, when she gets away from the mansion and gets to to her sister, who's picking her up, he crashes their window, just punches his fist right through the window, and he ends up all bloody and everything. And then it says two weeks later. And she's hiding out in the house of this cop friend of her sister's. Totally paranoid. Beyond yeah, she can't paranoid. Even go to the can't mailbox. Even, yeah, yeah, can't even go ten feet to the mailbox. That's how paranoid she is. And then her sister shows up and says, "Well, no need to worry anymore because he died. Yeah. He killed himself." And she shows him or shows her pictures of him lying supposedly dead on the ground. So. Our lead character, um, I think her name was Cecilia. Yes. She starts to have a life again. And then just as soon as she starts having fun, he takes it back. Yeah. Um, in the same way that he abused her before. So she, she knew the routine in which he was going to isolate her and then have fun with her. Yeah. Um... But, but uh, shortly after she learns that, that he is dead and she kind of takes her, her confidence back and her starts living again, she gets notification from his brother, yeah. who is a lawyer, telling her that basically in the will, everything was left to her with stipulations. Yes. She doesn't bother to read the fine print. She's just glad to hear everything is finished with him. She doesn't have to deal with his family or anything anymore. And she begins to, again, try to live her life. The whole time that part is happening in the movie, we, we are seeing someone watching her, like, through the windows and from down the hallway, very narrow. You see this, the sides of the walls and stuff, so it's this very kind of tunnel yeah. vision yeah. where she's and in the center. And it's just what the camera is portraying, what they are seeing her doing. And it was creepy. And then you start seeing, because at this point, we, we, the audience and the characters, still think that he's dead. And we start seeing what we think might be paranormal activity. Yeah. Uh, bed sheets, she's lying in bed and the bed sheets are pulled off of her. And a camera goes off multiple times, taking pictures of her while she's sleeping. Uh, the knife when she's cooking, it just kind of yeah, like picks knife, itself up and the disappears. Knife, yeah, the knife just kind of yeah goes off the sh the counter, and we we don't see the knife again till much later. She's cooking. She walks away from the stove for a couple of minutes, and all of a sudden, there's a huge kitchen fire. He turns the gas up. And, yeah, yeah, which we we learn later on. Yeah, um, so the the people she's staying with. They start thinking she's crazy. Her sister starts to think she's crazy. Um, and she spends the next chunk of the, the movie trying to prove she's not, not crazy. crazy. <laughs> and, um, and then when she's in the institution, they finally yes, start she, to believe her. She's put yeah. into an institution because she supposedly kills her sister in front of a bunch of people. Yeah. But her sister, uh, they, they go, her and her sister had a huge fight because her sister received an email saying that she didn't want her in her life anymore. And she didn't write it. But she didn't write it. It was, it was the um, boyfriend or someone working for the boyfriend. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of hinted um, midway that maybe the boyfriend wasn't... Um, the one to blame for all this happening at the house. That it was his brother. That it was his brother. I'm, it's hinted at that. But I don't think it, that's the case. I think it was the brother who was manipulating the brother. It, the boyfriend manipulated the brother. brother. You mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then his, his brother takes the fall. Um, he gets killed. Um, but, but the, um, she goes back to the house and, to the mansion, I should say. She goes back to the mansion and finds this suit because 
the abusive boyfriend, and I can't remember the character's name. I want to say Tim, but I could be wrong. Um, the abusive boyfriend, he he was a leading um, fiber was, optics. Yeah, but was I, was he a professor? He was a scientist. He was a, we'll call an him inventor, a, sort of. Yeah, thing? we'll yeah. call him a scientist yeah. or an inventor. And he made this suit that reflected and bounced light off it, so it was this giant optic illusion. So she finds a copy of the suit, and after the brother, the lawyer brother gets killed, and it's revealed he was wearing the suit for part of this, so half of what happens to her while she's staying at the cop's house, you don't know if it was the, the right. abusive boyfriend or the obsessive brother. Yeah. Um, it's kind of... It could have been either way. It could have been both, both of them. At the same time, yeah. And then, uh, so her sis her and her sister are out in public. They have a dinner. And the sister is, is um, the, the, the mysterious knife, that the knife that mysteriously disappeared suddenly shows up again. Yeah. And it's got, it's got uh, Cecilia's fingerprints on it and everything. And that's used to kill her sister in public by one of the two brothers. We're not sure which one. The abusive boyfriend or the lawyer brother. We don't know which and one. It, it turns out it was all just because he wanted her back and he gave he manipulated the situation where she can't have the money if she murdered if she does a criminal act. Or um, was deemed insane. insane. Um and then the mysterious, uh, or, well, the boyfriend, or the brothers, the brother of the boyfriend comes back. Lawyer brother. <laughs> um, saying that, did you really think you can get away from this? And if you want to keep the baby. Yes, she finds out she's pregnant. And um, when, she's, when she first gets put into the mental institution, she finds out she's pregnant. And she doesn't believe it at first because she was taking birth control. But then the lawyer brother says, he switched those out on you a yeah. long time ago. He, he knew you were hiding this from him and he switched them out and just gave you sugar pills. So, yeah. continue. Um, <laughs> so, there was only one way out for her. Um, well, two ways. She could two fight ways. or she could go back. Yeah, so and, yeah. she's in the institution and someone sneaks in. In, in the suit, someone sneaks in and starts harassing her and everything, and um, she manages the suit in, yeah. in ways so it flickers and it can be seen at times. So security are fighting this guy off, and half of it's like in, invisible, so and half of it's the flickering suit. But so many people get killed in this ten minutes of of. A lot of, I think there was more wounded than there was killed. Uh, yeah, and then yeah. that's when we learn um, uh, she kills the person in the suit, and that's when we learn it was the lawyer brother. Um, then she sets up... No. Then they find out the cops go to the mansion and they find the abusive boyfriend tied in up in a closet in the walls. Yes. He's been... Uh, he's been um, walled in, literally yeah. walled in, and we learn, okay, so he's not really dead, which is what she's been telling everybody from the beginning, that he's not really dead, that he, this is the kind of thing, like you were saying, he manipulates people to the point where he isolates them and makes them feel so threatened and paranoid that they, they depend solely on him. He really manipulates them. She agrees to meet with him, have dinner at the mansion. She's wearing a wire, which he doesn't know. And she knows, well, she obviously knows where all the security cameras are. Yes. And uh, she uses that to her advantage to change the story, take back her life. And on the security cameras, so that there is video proof that nobody was in the room with him, quote unquote, yeah. that he kills himself. And then we learn at the the next, the, the end of the movie, she walks out with a copy of the suit. 
that's mm -hmm. kind of where it ends. Um, so it is a psychological thriller. Yeah. I, I wouldn't really call it a horror film. No, uh, it was a lot of cat and mouse. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It it really had more of the more of a feel of of a nineteen forties or nineteen fifties universal horror story. Um, but you were saying at the beginning of this review that at first you didn't. Yeah, I was unsure about it. Um, it just seemed like it was all going to be around abuse. It, it turned out I was right on that. Well, yeah. But the way that they made the story kind of fit with the film. Like, it just... Everything came, fit with the story. Yeah. Yeah, nothing... Everything came together. Nothing, was, nothing was, was put in there that did not help to evolve the story. Yeah. Like, the um, there's... So many movies out there that will do special effects for the sake of special effects. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Um, the only special effects I really noticed was the suit. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was a logical reason for that. Yeah. Um, okay, one of, the, one of the things, when we first got into the theater, one of the things I had said to her was, God, I hope there's not a whole lot of jump scares. And there was. There mm -hmm. was. Um, they weren't so bad. They were well pr placed. Um, I didn't necessarily jump. I did that much. <laughs> <laughs> I did. There was, um, and you knew it was coming. Yeah. You could feel it coming. The suspenseful music and everything got louder. I think that was one thing they could have gotten rid of. I think it would have worked a little bit better if there was more silence. Yeah. If there was less music Tension. music yeah. cues if there's less music cues telling you okay now we're going to do something yeah. i think if it had just been silent it would have worked just a tad better but yes there were moments where i did jump mm -hmm. even though i knew it was coming yeah um and another thing i had said to you right when it was opening the the, the opening credits and i'm like oh the universal logo wasn't in black and white and before, was, yeah. before I even got the sentence completely out of my mouth, then the uh, first scene was a black and white scene and the words universal pictures were in black and white. I'm like, with the waves coming up, that was really cool. Yeah. I really like that because every time the waves hit, they would do a cast member or um, their production and it was really neat. Yeah, yeah. And, and at first thought you'd think, well, why why associate the water with it but water and reflection and that was another thing there are windows and um i think in almost every scene there was either windows or like well the mansion was a lot of windows and it was yeah. on the ocean yes and i think that that was a part of her being isolated in that thing was the ocean to one side you're in this compound the only escape is out in the world yeah um i just totally lost my train of thought <laughs> but yes with the scene the opening scene with the water and the waves and then it comes up over the landscape and through the window to them and everything is kind of in this tunnel vision which gives you this very claustrophobic feeling and I like that. That yes. helps. Again, I say if they had lost some of the, the sound, um, some of the sound cues, and just made silence the background, it, things would have been a little more creepier. So you have here a story about abuse. You have here a story where you're not totally sure if you're losing your mind or not. Yeah. And nobody's the paranoia. Nobody's believing her. Nobody wants to believe her. The manipulation. I'm going to say this is a very classic vampire story. It's not a quote-unquote vampire story, you know, with the blood and the fangs and the coffins or nothing like that. But the manipulation mm -hmm. and the idea of I want to own you. Yeah. You were mine. No one else can have you. No one else can, can ever. And the fact that she got away and that was his thing that made him hold on to her 
was because she was the only one that ever did. Yeah, yes. Um, she makes a, a point of saying to him at one point in the story, you could have any woman you want. Yeah. You, you're rich, you're gorgeous, you could have any woman you want. Why do you want me? And his reaction was, because you don't need me. Because you yeah. were not impressed by me. You were not impressed by the money. And that made her desirable to him. Um, and I, I, I feel like we're leaving something out here. I'm not sure. Um, it's a movie about control. It is. And insecurity, because he's extremely insecure. But he's also a narcissist. Yes. Which is a very bad combination. That was something, they kept bringing up the word narcissist, which when you tie that again into reflection, and isn't that uh, it the is, story The story is the reflection in the pond. Right. Yes. So it, it, it was like um, stories within stories, and I think they wanted to, to put that... With the optics, the the water, um, the narcissist. Yeah, the idea that things are not as they seem. Um, I I when we came, when when I got home, I kind of went looking online to see because we didn't get to see till the end of the credits. Like the the credits started to roll, and the the screening room we were in, they turned the lights on, and that was kind of it. There was you couldn't see the screen anymore, so you couldn't tell if there was any end credit piece or anything so I went to look it up and what I found out was no there was not there was no end credit piece but they've already d uh, decided to go ahead with you made a comment yeah. about a sequel <laughs> so there's going to be the yeah. invisible woman is listed as the next in in this kind of mini series um I don't know. I've never seen any, like, I have seen a couple of Invisible Man movies over the, the decades. I've never actually watched any of the Invisible Woman movies, so um, I don't know how, how yeah. good they are. And I hope that they keep the characters from the first one. I have no idea. It, um, it, just, it just said that because it had made so much on its first opening day that they green-lighted the, a sequel. Um... Yeah, but this this is, it's a scary movie in in a reality-based fact. Um, I'm making myself sound like an idiot here. <laughs> it's not scary in the traditional horror film. It's scary because this could really happen. It probably is uh, happening you know, all over the place. Yeah, the abuse, yeah. the manipulation. The idea that you're being stalked. There's one scene where she's she's reading online about stalkers and stuff, and it says uh, about them being able to hack into your your Cameras. video cams. Yeah. She puts nail polish over her video cam uh, or her webcam on her laptop so that nobody can record her. I thought that might come into play later on, but it never did. It, I think it was just her being scared. Um, knowing the but, possibilities of how rich he was and his brother is, but even even the fact that he wouldn't have to be rich, it, it was it was the fact that if someone is going to stalk you, they're going to find a way to stalk you. Yeah, and that's the real big underlining scariness of this movie is is the abuse and and manipulation and stalking element. Like, it, like you said, it happens way too much, way too much in real life. Um, and I have to point this out too. I made this comment to you as we were leaving. I think that our, because there's so much water and there's so much wind, the, the, this movie really plays up on the sounds of isolation with the, with lots of water and lots yeah. of wind. Um, I think the, the screening room we were sitting in, in our cinema, cranked up the Easy environmental. Yeah. Because yeah. it just, where we, were, where we were just seemed to get super, super, super cold every time a scene had rain yeah. or yeah. wind. 
and it just seemed like I was shivering through that whole thing. Um, I think they might um, just through the theater, like just blowing the air. And... But it, it was timed way too, so I don't know about anybody else's screening rooms, but ours seemed to be very, um, um, the whole experience. I still feel like we're missing something, <laughs> but... It was a pretty straightforward story. Yeah. Um, and I really do hope that they use the characters. Like, could, she was pregnant, so that could be yeah. the next story. Yeah, that could, that could jump off to the next story. Or it might not have anything. The next one might be a completely different mm -hmm. round yeah. of characters. Who knows? Um, they all seem to have difference, the Invisible Men. Like, how they become invisible... What they yeah. do with the invisibility. Um, this so, one, this one was pure science yeah. compared to the original back in was it the thirties or forties? Um, I want to say the thirties, but I could be wrong. Which had like a magic potion yeah. <laughs> or something. So, so this one, this one was very rooted in technology, and it it was for the times, like yes. the time that we live. Yes, in. Yeah. which you know make it the, the fact that they were able to think of the 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 logical explanation yeah. actually adds to a layer <laughs> of scariness because, yeah because it could be possible yeah you, you don't know like because it was a it was a very um basic idea well i don't maybe basic is, is not the right word to be saying um because the suit is made out of multiple little cameras and mirrors it's it is doable it's possible, yeah. yeah it's doable it's doable if if you're smart enough yeah wow hmm. um anything no that covers it like it for me it was just it was very you know to the point i didn't get it at first but what do you mean you didn't get it at first um just why there was abuse and like to get invisible like we didn't know about the suit until a little bit later. we did though when she's leaving the house in the first couple of minutes and she's going through she has to go through the laboratory to get to the parking lot um the garage i mean and she stops and she sees there's these four suits in the background and then there's this big framework that's all lit up and she kind of looks at it like, what the hell's going on here? What is he up to? Yeah. And then we don't think about it again for yeah. a like, 30 minutes or something. It just looks like the showcase is empty. Like, it's got yeah. the clamps, but you don't see anything in the clamps. And that was our, yeah, it was our first look, but we didn't know what it was. Right. Yeah. Um, and they do use shadows uh, through, throughout the movie when, when she's kind of alone in... in the cop's house hiding out yep. there's moments where they pan across and you see these big shapes and shadows drapes um and you think someone's going to move through there and they never do yeah they kind of set it up and you think okay now wait oh no it didn't happen but they're setting you up for the yeah times that they want yeah yeah it, and it was it was done for the i i i hate Movies that rely solely on special effects, but this movie, for the amount of special effects that they must have used, and I'm assuming this, we don't know how much was, was done with with um, practical, this is, I have no idea how much was actually done with practical. I'm assuming a half of it could um, have been. Well, they could have used a green suit, though. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean by practical, yeah. yeah. Which would have been the exact same thing as the idea of the, that is, that is really creepy <laughs> <laughs> that a green suit is basically the same thing as an um, as the invisible man suit. on camera. Right. Which you would look a little silly going around with yeah, a green suit on. But the fact is yeah. that, sort of speaking, technology already exists because of the green suits. Yeah. Um... But the for the for what I'm assuming, the amount of special effects that they would have used, 
they did it seamlessly and they did it um, to the point of, of only where it needed to be done. And again, I, I'm, I'm hoping we find out that it's all green suit. I'm hoping that that 90% yeah. of it, I'm hoping that we find out that 90% of this movie was was practical um, illusions. Yes. So to say. Yeah. Yes. I can't talk today. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Mercury retrogrades really got me. So um, I think that might be, I think that might be it. I loved it. It was a good movie. I, I enjoyed flying. I, I I logged it on my letter uh, letterbox.com profile and I gave it four stars. I don't think I've given anything four stars in <laughs> in a long time. It, it's subtle, but it's I don't want to say typical because it's not. It's refreshing. Yes. It's something, like I said, you would expect from, like, the 40s or 50s. It's not the over-the-top stuff that we're seeing in, in present-day storytelling. And I think that's what makes it work. And the real-world aspect to it, too. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to know, though, how he managed to... Um, how, how the character of the abusive boyfriend managed to get his lawyer brother to go along with him. I would like to know how I much... I think they did a little bit touch on that because they, they grew up together. If yes. One's a narcissist, always a narcissist. But the, brother, but the lawyer brother kind of says at one point that he's terrified of him, but then he's the one in the suit yeah. for half the movie. I would really like to know how much of that how much of that was supposed to be I, I love that that they leave you kind of going okay was the whole time the guy in the suit the yeah, one so you brother don't really or, know. and who really so I, I almost wanted to think I, I almost want to say that at one point I was thinking the baby was going to be the brothers that he had snuck in in the suit and drugged her because she does get drugged a couple of times in the movie. Yes. Yeah. So, but, um, we're, I'm rambling now. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Huntress Lumina Shade and I'm Art of Blood, the ghoul next door. Creeping screams. Oh.